Good morning and welcome to the AM News. And to our first story, Medical Superintendent of the Jirpa St. Joseph Hospital, Dr. Richard Wodaseme, has expressed worry over the delay and reimbursement of monies owed to them by the National Health Insurance Authority. Now, the NHIA currently owes the facility more than 1 million Ghana CDs. Dr. Wuda says this is affecting the operations of the hospital and wants the NHIA to redeem its pledges. There's more in this report filed by Rafiq Salam. Established some 65 years ago, the Jiriba St. Joseph Hospital continues to be one of the preferred destinations for health care in the region and beyond, largely because of its dedicated and committed workforce. Medical superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Richard Wood, has stated that the hospital has maintained its unique identity in the provision of quality health care to its clients, but was quick to concede that it has not been achieved on a silver platter. He noted that the erratic reimbursement of monies owed by the National Health Insurance Authority to the hospital forces them to sometimes pass the inefficiencies to the poor clients. 96% of all hospital attendants are bearers of National Health Insurance Card. Yet, the scheme has only reimbursed up to May 2017, with the rest of the months yet to be settled. Due to this poor flow of funds, we owe suppliers huge sums of money, and most of them are not willing to give us consumables to work with. It is therefore a common sight to be faced with frequent stockouts of drugs and non-drug consumables. Under such difficult conditions, the hospital is usually compelled to pass these inefficiencies to our poor clients, who are asked to pay top ups for various services. Dr. Wood Assemi said the National Health Insurance Scheme is a good proper policy intervention and call on Ghanaians to depoliticize the scheme to enable it to achieve its intended purpose. The issue of abandoned projects also found space in the medical superintendent's speech. And a classic example is this edifice which is staring direct at us. This is supposed to be our administration block but has been abandoned for the past 10 years. There are other staff courtesies which have also been left to rot. We are therefore appealing to the municipal assembly to consider capturing these projects in their budget to enable them be completed. Our fence wall is not complete, and this allows miscreants to have access into our hospital, thereby terrorizing both clients and staff. Jiriba Municipal Chief Executive Christian Bombanya Amodu stated that the Assembly will continue to commit resources to the health sector. The Assembly has therefore earmarked 37.48% of its budget for the social sector, which includes health and education. Being aware of the human resource and infrastructural challenges in the health sector, the Assembly commit itself to improve the situation in various ways, including the following. A, providing infrastructure in the form of cheap compound and accommodation for health professionals. Indeed, the assembly will soon commence the procurement process for construction of cheap compound at Tampala and Zagua under the district development facility. Some past and present staff of the hospital were rewarded for their dedication to duty. The team for the celebration was workers' day celebration in Latin on Joseph the Worker to increase output of staff. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Jiruba. Rasfiq Salam there. Now, Think Tank Health and Safety Ghana is calling on Parliament to, as a matter of urgency, ratify the major international labor organization conventions to protect the rights of workers in the country. According to the group, many workers are being subjected to inhumane and hazardous treatment with meager wages, making them prone to injuries and many health uh, conditions. At a sensitization workshop organized for employers and some employees in Cape Coast, the group urged workers to demand better work environment environmental conditions rather than sacrificing their health for money. Richard Kodronyako has more. In any labor relationship, employers are expected to provide safety devices for the employees to enable the employees work in safety and in comfort. Sadly, 
While many employers overlook their responsibilities under the labor laws, employees, for the sake of protecting their jobs, continue to work in hazardous environments. This, according to Labor and Health Think Tank, Health and Safety Ghana, is affecting the health and safety of many workers in the country. The group want Parliament to, as a matter of necessity, ratify the major ILO conventions to enable workers demand from their employers the necessary working conditions. Professor Victor Bako is the programs manager of Health and Safety Ghana. That's, that's what we keep on saying, that uh, we, we have to continue the advocacy and uh, continue to lobby the, our leaders to make sure that they ratify the, the major ILO conventions so that uh, workers will have their rights and employers will have their rights. If this is not done, well, then there will be difficulty. This attitude of uh, yes and must, uh, must stop. Uh, you don't sacrifice your, your health, your safety just because of money. No, even though you need to get, uh, get some work to do and get me paid so that you can survive. But I think you, 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 you don't get money just because, uh, so you don't get that small money and then you go home and you will not feel safe. You don't get that small money, you go home and you fall sick. So who, who, can, who can test for you? When you go home and you are no longer uh, available, somebody else is there to do the work for you. So you, you must you must ob uh, observe your right. Uh, if, the, if the workplace conditions are not good, yeah. my brother, I would advise you, don't go there. Look elsewhere. If you don't get that job, another job will be waiting for you. Some of the participants spoke to Joy News. They have to provide the PPEs, the safety devices that are required to protect the employee. And then they have to also give them access or training. For, in, for our staff, industrial accidents, we've recorded none for this whole year, starting from um, November. November 7th, November 13th, that's the 231 days accident free, that's, that I said. But when it comes to the third party, that is where we have issues. By third party, I'm talking about contractors, we are talking about um, passerbys, people who we serve with our products. That is where the issue is. But we've not just left it open, or we've not just left them to their feet. We embark on um, education. Richard Kwejenya Akon. Joy News, Cape Coast. Now, the minority in Parliament has vowed to resist any attempt by the Speaker to prevent them from speaking on issues on the floor during this sit-in. Uh, the last meeting saw several clashes between the minority and the Speaker over procedural issues with the opposition MPs engaging in walkouts and calling into question the Speaker's objectivity. Now, Minority Chief Whip Mohamed Muntaka Mubarak has has been telling my colleague Alton Burberry the group has served notice and they will fight off any action that seeks to silence them. We are more than happy to cooperate with the speaker to help the speaker to run the house. I mean, it's our responsibility, but we want to do that within the rules. I mean, I keep saying that if we all adhere to the rules, it will create harmony because obviously you give me the space to speak and where I'm going SS, you use the rules to, 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 to stop me. But where you want to play smart, you want to close the doors for me to be able to speak. When I know if we vote, I'll lose. Obviously, you will be attracting, you will be forcing me to do the unconventional things to be heard. And we all don't like it. So we are hoping that we adhere to the rules. We we'll all keep the relationship. Because one of the things that helps in leadership in parliament, I haven't been there for some time, is when we talk to each other. Uh -huh. So we agree. Where we, we have disagreement, we state it. And you allow me mm. to, to state my disagreement on the floor. But where we have a meeting and I indicate to you where I disagree with you, then because of that, you try to, to use that opportunity to block me so that I don't get head on the floor. Obviously, it will create a acrimonial situation. Mm. It is our hope that all of us have used the recess to reflect on all what has happened in the previous uh, meeting so that we we'll, we'll, we'll chart a new path mm. where we we'll adhere to the rules, we we'll allow each other space, we we'll listen to each other so that the House will have a lot of harmony. Because obviously we can't agree on everything. Mm. But even where we disagree, we need to have respect for each other and know that we we'll operate within the confines of the rules of the House. 
But the majority chief whip, Kwesi Amea Treme, says the minority must simply respect the rules of the House. Both sides, plus the speaker, we should have a common understanding of what we do in the House. Um, they want to speak, let them speak. They want to have their say, let them have their say. However wrong they may be, let them vent out uh, whatever issues that they have. If there, there's a need to respond to those issues that they bring up, we, we shall accordingly respond to but them. Do you think the speaker was hard on them in the last meeting? I, I don't think so. That is their you know, conclusion. That, that is their conclusion, but I don't think so. I hold a contrary view. But all in all, we don't have to portray ourselves as people who are always fighting in the chamber to the outside world for what I call very, very minute matters, disagreements, then we overblow it, blow it out of proportion. And the public thinks that nothing is working in parliament. Those are matters that I think we can suppress in this meeting. Now the Speaker, Professor Michael Quay, on his part, is calling for a decorum and respect for the Chair as the House considers several bills. He says members should desist from discussing parliamentary matters in the media. Definitely no one in this Honourable House who fears media, because without that you won't be here. Because you need to communicate with people before you even get elected. But at the same time, we must be very careful about matters Pending before the House, which become a um, subject matter of comment, particularly before even the matter comes for us. Uh, the media can never be a pre trial chamber for honorable members of parliament, nor a substitute for this honorable House in terms of deliberation on affairs of state. And if we do that, we lower our own dignity and we do our people the service. Therefore, let's, let's know how to maintain the thin line of discretion in this regard. Now, lawyers for former Cocoa Board Chief Executive Dr. Stephen Opuni have accused the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, of harassing their clients by using all means possible to have the, the, his accounts frozen. Now, lead counsel Samuel Kojo, a argued at an Accra High Court on Tuesday, the investigative body was behaving like a monstrous creature, ensuring that Dr. Opuni's rights are infringed. Iyoko has, over the past 14 months, secured two court orders, freezing the former Cocker Board's boss accounts with his lawyers, currently battling in courts to overturn the latest order. There's more in the following report. In April 2018, lawyers for Dr. Opuni obtained an order from an Accra High Court granting him access to the accounts. The accounts are held in various branches of Barclays and Ecobank. Yoko first froze the two in February 2017 when it commenced investigation into some fertilizer contracts at Cocoa Board. Dr. Opuni's lawyers say this has made it difficult for him to fend for himself. On April 23, 2018, when lawyers for Dr. Opuni made a request for defreezing of the account, the Economic and Organized Crime Office did not oppose the application. However, barely 24 hours after the court had granted Dr. Opuni access to the accounts, Yoko filed an application for the accounts to be frozen once again. Lead lawyer for Dr. Opuni on Tuesday accused the investigative body of harassment. He said, quote, they have failed to show the account is tainted. Yoko has now not only become a monster, but a Frankenstein. They are aware he hasn't been charged with any offense which will require confiscation of his assets, end quote. He explained to the court the only amount in the two accounts Yoko had described as tainted was 25,000 CDs he said to have received from businessman Seidu Agongo. Lawyer Kujo said it cannot be the basis for the accounts to be frozen. Lawyer for the investigative body Jacqueline Avotri disagreed. She insisted Yoko acted within law when it requested for the accounts to be frozen. Asked about whether Yoko had not concluded investigations, Lawyer Avotri said the investigations was a process and could be in various phases. Yoko, she argued, was acting within law when it decided not to oppose the motion for defreezing. The case was adjourned to May 16 for lawyers of Yoko to complete their oral submission. The High Court judge is also expected to fix a date to give her ruling on the matter. This will either mean Dr. Opuni will have access to his account or whether it will remain frozen. 
That is all for Air News. Roland, what's happening on the show today? Well, definitely we'll have more discussions. We'll be joined by, well, myself, mm -hmm. and then also you, uh, as uh, Joseph Akable also comes in for the second day. We'll have some great discussions as we earlier started from the beginning of the week. And um, today is AM Business. It's another Wednesday, and so we'll be discussing business this morning. Maps. Well, as always, we'll bring you the latest sports headlines. Benedict also will be here. And uh, you, you love sports, don't you? Roland, we've been over this. I don't. We discussed this. Rugby. Only rugby. Only rugby, <laughs> Roland. Only so, rugby. So we'll see how that goes. But we'll have wrap up with uh, great entertainment on AM Showbiz with Becky. But please get interactive. Facebook Journey on TV is our regular page. And then also you can watch us regularly through our channel on YouTube, My Online TV. Joseph Akable, myself, and Mapiso Sabidi. We'll be doing a review of the newspapers. We'll look at the front and back pages. And then we'll look at MyJoinLine.com and the rest of the online portals. Again, please know that we'll bring you the latest update as far as we're concerned on um, what has been happening with those Palestinians killed by the Israelis. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you up to date with how preparations are ongoing for that royal wedding that will be taking place in the United Kingdom. But our guest for this morning on AM Talk will be Roxy Nelson de Palma, who is a legal practitioner, member of parliament for South Dying, as well as another legal practitioner, member of parliament for Second D, Andre Japamesa, all joining us this morning. So it will be great discussion highlights, my pizza. Okay, so we're taking a break, and then when we come back, we'll have a lot more.